category of their own, and I sort of lopped it off over here. These dolls appeared during the mod era, and all of them were wildly popular, and they appeared about within a year of each other. The first one was Julia, who was, uh, was based on the television show Julia, where she played the part of a nurse, uh, and she was raising her son. Uh, it was uh, really, really, if you knew who Julia, Diane Carroll was, she's really, really, really beautiful. And her picture is on the box, and she was kind of disappointed <coughs> because she didn't think like his face looked like her, which it doesn't. Exactly. It's still a really pretty doll, but it really doesn't look like Diane Carroll. Um, so I thought, let's get her out of the nurse uniform, and she's a skater. <laughs> um, <laughs> next one was Twiggy, and Twiggy was made with the Francie molds, and they used the uh, face mold of Casey to be Twiggy. The big difference between them is that she has a shorter haircut, same shade of blonde hair, but she has really heavy uh, eyeliner, which was a trademark for Twiggy. And this doll wears clothes really great. She's wearing a Teen Skipper when Teen Skipper was about as tall as Barbie for a few years. You forgot to mention that doll's fat next to Twiggy. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Twiggy. Yeah, Twiggy was yeah probably like 80 pounds or something. Um, <laughs> The third one, which I think was about 69, was Truly Scrumptious, and I think the actress that played her was Sally Ann Howe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, interesting doll, because what they did was they used Barbie's body, and then they put the fancy head mold on, but gave it a hairstyle that looked like the actress in the movie. So it's really cute, but she's kind of a fish out of water when you don't have her in the Truly Scrumptious costumes. Mm -hmm. She's wearing something that fits the era. I think this was an Avon, maybe an Avon doll's costume. I that I, a oh, a new era, okay. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, it was this is pretty much her era of clothes, so it sort of worked for her. She came in two editions, just like Julia did. You could get TNT, the TNT for Julia and the talker, or you could get the standard, which is no bending legs, no twist waist, truly scrumptious, or a talking truly scrumptious that had bendable legs. Twiggy was only in a TNT because the body cavity is too small for a, a talking component. None of those dolls ever talked. Okay, now that lops off because the next set of dolls and all the way for the rest are completely different from these dolls. These were made in the mod era with the mod components and they had this life that worked around the Barbie dolls that were made for the mod era. They were always tied in as friends and they could wear Barbie's clothes and Barbie could wear their clothes or whatever it was. We don't have another celebrity doll until we get to the year 1977. And these celebrity dolls are based on Donnie and Marie Osmond, who were very popular. They had their own TV variety show. It was very cute. I was prime time age in the 70s to watch that. And they did a wonderful show, an hour long. It was songs and dances, and then there would be comedy skits and so forth in it. And they had really, really cute outfits. Donnie and Marie had a ton of outfits made for them. About 50% of them were doubles that you could, that you could buy the outfit for Donnie and the coordinating one for her. Super colorful, super cute. And then there was a whole other set of just things for Marie that Donnie didn't have a coordinating outfit for. Every Donnie outfit came with purple socks. It was the only one he could have. Um, the odd thing about these dolls is the proportions of their heads. Yeah. Donnie looks normal, but Marie's head is huge by comparison. And so it never quite looks right when you are displaying them together. I put him in a Ken Fashion Avenue that I think looks really cute on him. Uh, Marie's wearing the original outfit from the Campbell Soup Barbie, and poor, poor Jimmy, <laughs> poor Jimmy. Um, his body was used three times. The first time it was used on Super Teen Scott, who was the boyfriend of Super Teen Skipper. It was used for Jimmy Osmond, and it was used for Peter Pan. Those are the only dolls that ever came in that size, and none of them had any other clothes made for them. So you either had to wear his silvery jumpsuit or Peter Pan's green pants, <laughs> or Scott's, which was probably worse than all of them. It was a disco roller skating outfit. Wow. Which, like these super short nylon shorts and a jacket. Or one was um, lucky enough to be Paul Bruce's. And <laughs> so yeah, I have, so I have to customize clothes for those guys, which I will get to eventually. Um, now we have an interesting uh, an interesting set of circumstances that caused the next group of dolls to appear. 
Hugely popular at that time was Charlie's Angels. It came out and it was a smash hit immediately and everybody was watching it and those three beautiful girls, you had to see what they were gonna be wearing the next time around. Um, Mattel got the license for some of the characters from Charlie's Angels, but not all, because Mego beat them to the punch and Mego got the first Farrah Fawcett doll and Mego also got Jacqueline Smith. So about a year later, Mattel got the licensing for Kate Jackson and then the new angel, which was Chris, I think. Yeah, and she was supposed to be like the sister of, of, of Farrah. And they still couldn't use Jacqueline or, um, they couldn't use Jacqueline or Farrah, but they had, uh, uh, they needed to have like a third doll, I guess. So. To pair with two Charlie's Angels, they took a race car driver named Kitty O'Neill, and they made her the third doll in the series, and they had a whole line of clothes for them, and it's all three. They called them the women of TV. That was their overarching theme. But like, I barely even remember hearing Kitty O'Neill's name during that time, so I guess she was a race car driver, but you know. Neat, because every one of them has a one-time use sculpt. They, they were never used for any other dolls other than that. Uh, I have Kate Jackson, who was uh, always my favorite angel, I think, because she was the smart one and always had the plan. Um, and I put her in a really cute, uh, it was one of the jeans fashions from the, uh, I think, like 90s. Yeah, uh, worked really well for her. For Cheryl Ladd, I put this odd outfit that I keep showing over and over again. It wasn't part of the Oscar de la Renta series, but it was something from the same era, and it's so weird. It's just, I keep, I, I keep putting it on different dolls just to see what it looks like on, on different dolls. It was kind of cool. Um, now, what happened was Migos dolls, which were doing lots of celebrities, they, they had Cher and they had Jacqueline Smith and they had Farrah Fawcett, they had Diana Ross, um, Tony <laughs> Tennille, there were quite a few. Um, here is Jacqueline Smith, who in my humble opinion was the most beautiful of all the angels on the Dollar Show. But when you look at what Mego did with them, all of them are like this. They all have this very square head that square looks head. really yeah. jolly. And you know, you, you look at Diana Ross, who's another beauty, and you see her face in that doll, and it's almost scary. <laughs> it's it's like, like a doll head sculpt? Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and they're all like that. And you know, the, I was checking, I was and the bodies are even a little bit scary. The hands are almost like a claw when you look at them as opposed, and the feet are kind of wonky too. Um, but they they have their place in history and they're kind of cool. Um, James, the sweetest person you could know, knows that I like celebrities and he gave these to me. Just he knew I loved Cher, he knew I loved these, he gave them to me. And not only did he give me the share, he gave me the one that I thought was the coolest one, which has the growing hair, because I like the short Egyptian cut that it has when you don't pull it out. So he's really pretty cool, I mean, when you look at the details. Now their clothing was kind of awesome. Bob Mackey designed a lot of the outfits for these dolls, and they looked pretty cool when you dressed them up. Okay. Um, <laughs> moving along, uh, there were other competing companies, and they were, uh, you know, everybody saw how well these were, were selling, so Brooke Shields was made into a fashion doll. Um, same problem with Brooke. Prettier than these, she, they, did the, they did the smart thing and made it the same size so that she could share Barbie's clothes. Two editions of this doll. The first one has really a lower quality hair, and so it's frizzy already when it comes out of the box. The second edition has great hair, but she gets a greasy face. And so from time to time, you have to clean her face off. But still really pretty. She had a whole line of clothes just for her and pattern sets that you could buy. I have her pattern set, and eventually I'm going to make all of those outfits and all of my seven clothes will get you to wear them. <laughs> um, the next, yeah, the next dolls to come up, more celebrities. This was like uh, the year after. This is. These were 78, 77, 78, now we're in 79. And in 79, Debbie Boone comes out. And Debbie Boone, at that point, was a really hot 
commodity because she had my single, You Light Up My Life. There was never another one, but that, that song <laughs> went on forever. And it was, it was very cool. She did get to, to play some kind of cool roles in tour, touring companies of Broadway shows. So she was in the lead of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers when it came to Detroit and a couple of cool things like that. Um, she did seem to overcome the family scandal, which was, do you know the family scandal? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No. <laughs> you didn't hear this from me, but. Um, her dad is Pat Boone, and yeah. he was a major recording star in the 50s, and he had four daughters. And uh, one of the things that they did was they endorsed a product called Acne Statin, which was an acne cleaning for teenagers who had, you know, one of those, like, a clear seal thing. And they did all these commercials and all this stuff saying, look what it did for my daughter's skin. My daughters all use this. They they're ha all have perfect porcelain skin. And it came out later that they had never touched it. They had oh, never, yeah. ever used it, which I found particularly hypocritical considering he was extremely religious yeah, and very, 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 you know, um, oh, but it's okay to lie, and very judgmental, yeah, yeah. okay, for you to lie <laughs> and say you use this product. He was supposed product. to be Mr. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most of the ones you gotta watch out for. Uh, the next doll, same year, um, was Christy McNichol, <laughs> McNichol in the role of Buddy on a TV show called Family. And it was a kind of a cool show, it, it, wasn't, it didn't last very long, but they chose to do her. She shares the body of super teen Skipper. Um, she and Skipper were the only two to ever use that, and Skipper only used that super teen body for a couple of years, and then it was gone. Uh, next one is 1980. This is Chantel Goya, kind of hard to get because she was not released in this country. She was a singing star in France, and she had like a TV show that was especially for kids, came with all these other cute little outfits that you could buy that were replicas of the outfits that she wore on her little singing TV show. Next is Wayne Gretzky. I put them together because they could speak French to each other. <laughs> Wayne Gretzky uh, was 1983, and he came in his uh, original hockey uniform. He had a set of outfits that you could buy. You could buy his other uh, um, uniform, which was for the away games, and it was a, in a different colorway. And then he had a tuxedo that you could also get, which apparently trades for hundreds on eBay because it was pretty rare and hard to, uh, hard to find. Next, not another Mattel doll. This is also, uh, I think this is a Hasbro, and it's uh, Michael Jackson. And he is just a smidge smaller than Ken, so the clothes are a little bit bigger on him, but he can wear a lot of Ken clothes, looks really great. The thing about him and all the dolls that were singers is that their hands are sort of posed to hold a microphone. Mm -hmm. Put a pop bottle in it. They hold pop bottles great. <laughs> Pepsi, eh? It really looks good, go. yeah. Go, go, go. <laughs> 1992 is MC Hammer. And MC yeah, Hammer was, of course, a famous singer. And he had an incredible, he himself created a fashion style. Um, oh, yeah. If you are familiar with the really big parachute pants, mm -hmm. that was him. He, his, his stylist did that design and the fashion came, everybody had parachute pants because of him. So his original outfit is parachute pants. He had a whole set of outfits that you could get for them, all parachute pants. But when you take him out of his singing stuff and you put him in something else, he looks really good too. This is actually Grandpa Hart's original outfit, but it kind of works for him. MC Hammer had his own pattern too. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Ooh, I gotta buy those. Okay. <laughs> Parachute pants. Okay. He's still wearing the hammer down. Yeah. Now the next batch was 1992, and these dolls were patterned off of the television show. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I should have stopped. 90201. Right about here down, this group is a very distinct artistic style taken directly from the original Superstar Bowls. That's really what everything was copying there. When you get here, we're now into, it's still Superstar Bowl, but those of you who collect those will know the feet became a little bigger on the molds, the uh, face became a little fuller, and that's what you're gonna see with all this forward. Um, the body's legs bend even less, you get about two clicks out of them now. You can still get three over here, but now you're up to two clicks. These are the, 
Beverly Hills 90210 dolls, and there were five in this series. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they were originally released as four at the beginning, and then, yes, the next year, Tori Spelling's character was added. So, you have um, <coughs> Kelly Taylor, Jenny Garth, and I didn't watch the show, so I don't know what's their real name and what's their stage name. And Brenda Walsh, Shannon Doherty. <coughs> Tori Spelling, who played, I think Donna is her character, Donna Martin. Uh -huh. And then the two boys, which to me are the best in the whole thing. They have great sculpts that really, really look like them. These sort of do, but, so look more like Barbie, right? but they're, not, they're not quite the Barbie sculpt. It is a little bit different. I think these two have the same head. It's just yeah. different uh, makeups. Hers is distinctly different. Hers really is yeah, more Tori. like Tori Spelling. Yeah. Yeah. But these two guys are amazing, and they are Brandon Walsh, who was played by <coughs> Jason Priestley, and Dylan McKay, who was Luke Perry. Mm -hmm. And they look great in just about anything. I think they might have had a car that you could get as well, and I think there was like a restaurant play set and stuff like that too. Okay, so next guy that I have is 1994, and this is Ken as Rhett Butler. That was about when all that Gone with the Wind stuff came out for the first time. In the original, all the girls were Barbie's face, but the outfits from the movie, and the boy was Ken's face. Uh, now, because he's not made to look like Clark Gable, he just looks like an older guy. And he looks great when you put him in other stuff. Mm -hmm. If you want in your diorama to have somebody that's older, like a dad, works perfectly. He looks better. Yeah, I like him. I think he looks great. He's got a mustache, the gray yeah. in here. This is, um, then uh, the Lucys began mm -hmm. to appear. And thus far, I think there's five of them all together. And all of the Lucys were based on Lucy as she appeared in the original I Love Lucy series. I'm still hoping that at one point they're going to continue to use the mold, but then go to the bouffant that she wore in the second series, which was the Lucy show, and which I thought was really cool too, but because they've, they've yet to do one with that hairstyle. Oh, which doll was she? Good question. She was a gift also from James, so I don't know. It was the blue dress with the flowers on it. <coughs> no. It wasn't pregnancy, no. no. Pregnancy. That was the Ricky gift set, I think. The blue, the blue it, it, it's, it has a white collar and oh, a white... Yep. No, that's the no, suit. That's a little suit. That was the very first one. Oh, yeah. Right. Like 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 this was not by the I have her dress in back, but I didn't put it in. What is she wearing now? This is a Fashion Avenue. Oh. It was one of the nautical themed ones. The one with the it took me on. forever to sell. No, no. I love the outfit she had on. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the outfit. Okay. Yeah. So the next celebrity set is the uh, Clueless movie, and the Clueless movie was really cute and it was really popular when it first came out. And there are three girls in high school who are all best friends, and they go through a metamorphosis in the movie that's really kind of nice. And uh, they pattern them after those three dolls, and each one has its own sculpt. So the lead was um, Cher. I might have these on the wrong stands. Amber. Amber. Does Amber. Knows the movie. And I think this one is Dion. Yeah. Yeah. Dion, yes. Uh -huh. Is that her original outfit? No. What happened was they made uh, a set of outfits that you could buy for the coolest. I got the dolls but didn't have their original outfits, but at the same time Fashion Avenue was out, these fashions were out. So I nabbed all three of those when I got them. And I think there's one more with a fluffy pink coat that goes to it. Um, but the outfits are great. They're wonderfully detailed and all these cool accessories. And so those were uh, like. <laughs> Can short I make list. a point? Those don't look like teenagers. No, but the ones in the uh, the ones in the movie. Did look like teenagers? Did look like So Lucy was called sales resistance. Thank you. Okay. Can we hold it for a while? So. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, 20 minutes is up. So, um, just, um, uh, this is Henry Higgins, but we took Henry Higgins out of his uh, Broadway uh, costume, it's still Ken's Henbold, and you get another really good older Ken. Uh, but the difference is, at this point, um, they were making the Wizard of Oz characters as well, and they are now articulated. However, 
The doll's arms and legs are longer than any of the other ones, and so it's hard to get clothes that fit them well outside of their original outfits because they never had any specifically made. Some of the new fashion fashionista boy clothes will fit, but the fashionista boy's waists are tinier, and it's hard to get the pants up over these, these guys. Uh, this is Henry Higgins. Ken is Henry Higgins. Now we have the two twin sisters, um, Mary Kate and Ashley, and they each have their own head mold. Um, Mary Kate's is a closed mouth smile, and Ashley's is the open mouth smile. They had tons of incarnations. They probably made at least a half a dozen different sets of this doll with different themes, including a taller set. When they started to get toward the end, there's one set where they're a little bit taller. Um, these are the X-Files, and again, when you take them out of their clothes, they think they look like somebody else. Those glasses threw me off. This was the only way I could get a doll, a, a redhead with short hair. I had a brunette with short hair and a blonde with short hair, but the only way I could get a redhead with short hair was with that gift set. Um, this is... No, James Dean. Giant, James Dean, thank you. James Dean, and he too has this kind of body. So again, you always are a little bit, it's always a little bit tough to get clothes that fit well for him. And finally, one of my faves, this is Brandy, singer. And yeah, she does, she does. Looks like Sherry's face a lot. But she is so cute, uh, she came with an original outfit that was, was sort of a, she, she can dance a little bit with this uh, stand that she comes mm -hmm. with, uh, but she looks great in everything. So there they are, I'll leave them for a little while and you can enjoy them. Well, I don't have any ears.